Hello and how's it going everybody? And welcome to the very first installment of The Current. A magazine show produced by South Elgin High School's Beacon Academy students, bringing you the news from around the Fox Valley area. Coming up, we learn what it takes to be a pilot, get an inside scoop from a couple of South Elgin High School cheerleaders, highlight an exciting new experience for South Elgin students, find out what makes the school so magical, take a trip down to 101.9 FM and recap the Elgin Short Film Festival, get an exclusive interview with a nonprofit in Batavia, sit down with the owner of a local auto shop, and a restaurant review with Dan and Dan. I'm Daryl Barnes. And I'm Tara Konichny. And we'll be your hosts for this inaugural installment of the Current. If you've watched any TV shows since the 1920s, you might notice that the first episode is often called a pilot, which is a fancy term for a test episode to show what's expected to come. In order to have our smooth takeoff, we're going to kick things over to PJ Spitzer with our pilot. There are many things in life that are very ordinary to us, but were way more interesting when we were children, especially airplanes. However, for Greg Spitzer, this fascination didn't really end. Greg Spitzer is one of the 609,000 certified pilots in the United States, according to the AOPA, and has been one for over a year now. So I came to the Schomburg Airport to catch a glimpse into the life of a pilot and to understand why he loves flying. When and why did you decide that you wanted to be a pilot? Uh, well, I probably wanted to fly all my life. My dad was a pilot, so I grew up around it, and he had me in the airplane ever since I can remember. I wanted to do it all my life, but I don't think there's ever been a time I haven't wanted to do it. Um, so really, it's been a lifetime wanting to fly. What do you think it takes to become a pilot? Well, just mainly the desire to want to do it. And it takes like, a passion. After my sit down with Greg, he invited me to come check out his plane that he rents with his flight club. So, uh, like, what are some like responsibilities that you like you have to have while flying? Like, like, are there like rules or something like that? Yeah. Space requirements we're gonna follow. So this is the airport that we're at, Schaumburg, and you can see all these rings that go around O'Hare. There's some rings around Midway. There's a little ring around DuPage Airport. All of those are uh, controlled airspaces. So when you're asking for clearance, what exactly do you get with that? Do you get like just access to the airspace? Yeah, yeah, you get access to the airspace. Uh, generally, uh, we don't fly these kind of airplanes in the class Bravo airspace is too much just because mm -hmm. it's just way too much intensity of traffic. So for like two-way communication it's basically saying hey I'm going in the, the area? Yeah so you'll say for instance um, if you're flying into Midway you'll say uh, Midway approach this, you, then you say your name Skyhawk 3090 Papa say where you're at 20 miles west and then you say your intentions inbound uh, to land midway and you'll give your altitude also whatever your altitude is at. They'll acknowledge you and then give you instructions as to what how to proceed into the airspace. But then there's a lot of other FAA regulations called FARs, Federal Aviation Regulations, and it's a book like about that thick and you have to know all those rules. And the best part is that Greg even let me take part on one of his flights as his co-pilot. I gotta fly over some very familiar places like my school, Pheasant Run, and even my neighborhood. All with Greg by my side. Clearly, it takes a lot to become a pilot, but at least it's just plain awesome. While it takes a lot for a pilot to fly through the air, it takes a lot for cheerleaders to do the same. Bella Tusa is over at South Elgin High School learning what it's like to be an accomplished cheerleader. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, let's go! 
These are varsity cheerleaders at South Elgin High School, located in South Elgin, Illinois. This might seem like an average team, but two members have accomplished something that their school peers might have no idea about. I was motivated to join cheer because um, I had done gymnastics for 15 plus years and at that point um, I just had been like kind of over it. I well obviously I've only been doing it for this is only my second year so obviously I have the world championship for the USA Junior National Team. I started cheer a little bit over a year ago. What motivated me to uh, join uh, such a female dominant sport was I just wanted to try something new so obviously I won um, World Championships in April uh, with Tristan and the uh, U.S. National Junior Co-Ed team. A lot of work goes into a world champion. Um, like I said, I was on two, two all-star teams when I had won Worlds. So at, during April, I was practicing every single day, three and a half hours every weekday, and then we had double practices on the weekend, so my days were pretty full. To learn a little more about Tristan and TJ, We watch the game from the sidelines ourselves. Cheer is definitely not as easy as people think it is, or it's not as easy as it looks. There's, there's a lot that goes into it. Cheer is not, not at all as easy as people might think it is. A lot of people, I get this a lot, where they think it's just the sideline portion of it where you're just crowd leading, but it's so much more than that. Honestly, being a world champion is like no other accomplishment that I've ever accomplished before. Like just knowing that like you put in all the work and that you're, you're the best in the world, it's, there's no other feeling. Being a world champion is honestly like nothing else I've ever experienced. It was crazy to go down there and represent our country and then to be able to like win worlds I feel like is obviously something not a lot of people get to do and it's really like no other to be known that you're a world champion and you're the best of the best. For Storm News 17, I'm Bella Tusa. You can now check out Tristan, TJ, and the rest of the Storm cheerleaders at the football games at a new time. Here's McKenna Matoyer with more on the new experience for the student body. 14 years after the grand opening of U46's newest school, South Elgin High School, students are finally able to live the dream of experiencing Friday Night Lights at home. According to Daily Herald, thanks to a $1.4 million donation dedicated by Elgin Area School District U46 for the project's cost, the Storm Stadium has been outfitted with LED lighting around the football field. A new permanent press box sits atop the home bleachers and the track encircling the field is getting renovated. Although South Elgin High School has been open since 2005, it hasn't always followed the norm for football games. A highlight for most high schoolers during their four years revolves around nighttime football games. But for South Elgin, this was never a true tradition until this school year of 2019. From the moment the stadium opened until 2011, there was a lack of a football team, with no fans, no players, and most importantly, no field. When the school first opened, they, everybody had to get on a bus to go to Streamwood High School. Uh, there wasn't even a field here uh, for a couple years. Um, so just to experience what Friday Night Lights is, I think, in my opinion, every high school kid should, should have that, that experience. A football field was finally created during the 2011 school year, which increased attendance at games. However, the stadium was not complete. The field was lightless, leaving no possibility for Friday night games. For another eight years, South Elgin home games were on Saturday mornings. These games led to smaller crowds and an overall groggy energy among fans. Uh, homecoming week, it's such a great week. You know, theme days, a uh, lot of energy, um, powder puff game, uh, bonfire. We have the assembly and then 255, everybody goes home. You know, like all that energy, all that positiveness goes home. And it's very hard to replicate that on Saturday morning. Fast forward to 2019, the school now has Friday night games. The stands are packed and the spirit among students is high. You know, this year will be the first year that the student body gets to experience, you know, kind of what that's like. I have like goosebumps just kind of thinking about what that is now. So far, the new Friday night light games have been successful. Not only have the lights allowed for night games, they have brought together students in the community to create a sense of unity. 
With a record-setting crowd at the first ever Friday night football game at South Elgin High School, the people in attendance said it was a magical night. Here's Adam DeGuzman with more on what makes the school such a magical place. So I found myself scrolling through Instagram. Well, this led me across a picture one of my friends posted about Disney World. And then the picture was great and the caption was the most magical place on earth. Now this got me thinking, does magic really exist in places outside of Disney World? So I went out on a journey to the place that I spend most of my time, school. So when I got to school, I hit the ground running. I started interviewing a bunch of teachers, trying to find where the magic really lies within my home school, South Elgin High School. Now, for many of my teachers, the magic really lies within how they influence their students and what they truly teach them. But on my first interview with my teacher, Mr. Bozikas, who teaches the Beacon Academy at South Elgin High School, the magic that he brings to South Elgin is something truly unique. Hi, my name is Mr. Bozikas. And I teach Beacon here, which is basically, to, to simplify it, radio, TV, film. So uh, freshman year, when they come in the doors, we give them the basics. We teach them about the cameras and how to shoot it, how to set up. Um, and then we go into the basics of editing and teach them all about the software and teach them um, the different uh, editing techniques as they go through with different projects. We also offer a thing um, where we go out, out of the school and shoot um, live sporting events. It's kind of open to anybody to come out and learn how to do um, a live event. Now, although it may seem like the magic truly lies among the thousands of dollars worth of equipment Beacon Academy has or the shiny, expensive editing laptops, the magic truly lies within Mr. Bozikas himself. So Mr. Bozikas, what magic do you bring to South Belgium? The magic I bring to this school is magic. That's right. Mr. Bozikas has been a professional magician for over 30 years. Here's how we got into it. This whole magic thing started when I was nine years old. Begged my parents to buy me the $6 little magic kit. And back in 1971, $6 was a lot of money. They uh, eventually bought it for me. And um, I started practicing and playing around with it. And one and I just never stopped. This truly goes to show that the amount of magic a teacher brings to the classroom might be just a little more than what meets the eye. But kids, you better get those good grades in school, or else your teachers might just poof those good grades away. Adam DeUzman, South Elgin High School. We're going to take a trip downtown and see how a professional radio station operates. 71, sunny in Chicago. Warmer tomorrow, 75 for a high, maybe a chance of rain. And that is mixed weather. It is from Dodge Power Dollars. Millions of Americans nationwide wake up every morning and drive to work. On their way, they listen to the radio. I got a chance to talk to those that make that drive a little less dull. Um, I'm Kaz, and I've been here 15 years. And I'm Jen, and I have been here, I think I'm working on my 12th year right now. So, it's a long time in radio years. The theme of our show, which he came up with, is it is our job to make sure you're not doing yours. So it's about having fun. It's about sitting like you're hanging out with your friends. Because really, having... when you think about it, who wants to be at work during the day? You don't want to listen to your boss, right? That's true. You want to just kind of... Pass the time. Yeah. Pass the time. That's what radio has always been about ever since the start. In the early days of radio, music was played, baseball games narrated, news shared nationwide, and even entire stories read over the air. But almost 100 years later, a lot has changed. You know, it used to be, you know, it was a microphone, and you would talk to the microphone, and you'd reach your listeners that way, or they'd call you, but now it's... You know, it's everything. Facebook and it's Snapchat and it's Instagram and YouTube. it's all sorts of digital platforms that we're also involved with as right. well. If radio shows need to use digital platforms to connect to all these viewers, whose job is it to bring them all in? Well, that leads us to this man. Hi, I'm Dave Karwowski. I'm the uh, Director of Marketing here at Hubbard Radio Chicago. My focus primarily is with 101.9 The Mix and She 100.3. I dabble with 97.1 FM The Drive. Uh, but my main focus is on the two stations. The goal of my job is to get people to sample a station in, in a variety of ways. Is it um, through contesting, um, giveaways, out-of-home media, whether it be uh, television advertising, billboards, um, community outreach, um, events. Uh, it it kind of 
everything in a nutshell happening all at once. All in a nutshell, a great way of also describing what has happened in just the last 20 years. With the invention of the smartphone, everything is all within a thumb's reach. Music streaming services, podcasts, sports games, all on one device. However, they still aren't even close to reaching the numbers radio has. According to RadioInc.com, 224 million adults listen to the radio a week. And what keeps those who run the radio station coming back? I think the opportunity for us to put a little bit of lightheartedness into people's crazy lives. I love that. Reporting from Hubbard Radio in downtown Chicago, I'm Olivia Dean. Being so close to an international media hub like Chicago, the arts in Elgin are sometimes overlooked. A few weekends ago, I got the chance to go and cover one of the biggest events of the season in Elgin. Everyone knows that Hollywood and LA are the places to go for big movie premieres. But if you were here at the Hemmings Cultural Center in downtown Elgin Saturday, I'm not so sure you would have been able to tell the difference. On September 21st, the 11th annual Elgin Short Film Festival pulled out all the stops, rolling out the red carpet, hosting live entertainment, and securing WGN's Mike Toomey as the host of the event. All these things combined to give the six finalists a night to remember. PJ Spitzer and I were lucky enough to talk to a few of the filmmakers as they walked the red carpet. So you guys just walked the Elgin red carpet. How does it feel? Uh, I think it feels terrific. How do you feel, Willow? It's very exciting. <laughs> this feels this is kind of surreal. This is like real weird. I had no idea anything like this. this is in Elgin, you know? Like mm -hmm. it's great that there's such supportive people here. We see the awards behind us that were actually made right across the street over at Anderson's. Really? You excited to be possibly taking one of these home tonight? Of course. We're here to represent, take home a win yeah. if we can. Uh, but we're just excited to be here. All right. yeah. After the red carpet, everyone piled in to watch the six finalists. The films were followed with an intermission, giving fans the opportunity to cast their ballot for the fan favorite, while the judges decided who would win the other prizes. And it would be the two animated films, Starting Point and Waiting by the Phone, that took home the first and second place prizes. And we got a chance to speak to the creators after they heard the results. We are back with the winners of the Elgin Short Film Festival 2019. How does it feel now that you guys have confirmed that you got first place? It's exciting, very rewarding. Um, we're very excited to take home the place and uh, tell our director mm -hmm. that we got it. We're, you know, it's an absolute honor. So Olivia, waiting by the phone. Yes. Second place, I, I mean, that's great, right? Yes, thank you, yeah, I'm shocked and I feel super honored out of so there were so many amazing films up there tonight, and to be second place, like, that's really cool. <laughs> the night was surely a successful one for all those who won, and it was an enjoyable one for all those in attendance. The festival committee says that the event keeps getting better each and every year, which is, if that's the case, the next year's will be one you surely don't want to miss. Reporting from the Hemmings Cultural Center in downtown Elgin, I'm Daryl Barnes. Just down the road in a neighboring suburb, there's an MPO who uses arts as a way to bring people together. Here's Kira Bosch with that story. Americans have been engaged by the arts ever since transcendentalism took over the U.S. in the 1820s and 30s. However, our education and supplies are hard to come by. We went to Water Street Studios in Batavia, a nonprofit organization that aims to expose anyone and everyone to the amazing world of art. Let's take a look. Yeah, so Water Street Studios is a nonprofit art center here in downtown Batavia, but we serve the whole Fox Valley region and beyond. We have um, a gallery, we have multiple galleries. We have the Dempsey Family Gallery on the first floor, we have the uh, Chicago Capitol Gallery on the second floor, we have a resident artist gallery, and then we also have the Artist Collective Gallery, which features uh, professional work from local artists here. And we have 25 artist studios, we do art education and outreach, we serve over 2,000 students every single year, and that number keeps growing. Um, we don't always just operate here at Water Street, we also do programming outside in the community. So, for example, we do programs over at the Batavia Apartments, which is a section 8 housing facility on the east side of Batavia. Um, so serving kind of under-resourced families and making sure the arts are available to them as well. But then doing other things like partnering up with the libraries or um, partnering up with private schools or homeschoolers um, and making sure that the arts are integrated into that kind of curriculum as well. Profits are a little bit different than the typical kind of for-profit corporations, right? So 
The way that I usually distinguish nonprofit is that the money that we generate through our programming or when you pay for a class or you throw a donation in the jar, that goes right back into the programming rather than, you know, a CEO's back pocket or something like that. I would say it's really important that everybody knows that the you know, an art center or the arts aren't just for artists, that it really, the big goal is to make sure to create the space for anybody to interact with the arts. And you don't have to be an artist to interact with the arts. Um, I think a lot of the times the art industry has a connotation that is a little bit stuffy or pretentious or um, just not accessible. And I think what we're trying to do here at Water Street is make sure that the arts are accessible. And so, um, we want to make a place that's welcoming and inviting for everybody, regardless of whatever kind of barrier you face, or um, if you've been rejected from another community, or you have progressive ideas, or whatever that is, you can do that in a safe space here at an art center. But it's not just for artists. It's really just a place to feel something bigger than yourself. Similar to Water Street Studios, the owner of Wicked Wrench, an auto shop here in South Elgin, also strongly encourages people to be themselves. You can find a lot of familiar things in most auto shops you visit. Work boots, cars, tattoos, and greasy hands. However, there's one thing you won't find at most shops, and that's at the shop itself, being completely owned and run by two women. We're, we're always moving, always. There's never really any downtime here. This is Jamie Helm. She, along with her sister Naomi, own and run Wicked Ranch Automotive right here in the heart of South Elgin. We wanted to gear towards women and make them feel welcome in this shop and automotive environment and that's our strong point, but believe it or not, we actually have to f like a 50-50% customer mix. My sister and I are like, we're gonna open a shop, yeah, we're gonna do it. I'm like, well, you know, we gotta go through South Elgin and get the proper licensing. She's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, we do. <laughs> Which ended up being like a four month process, but everybody there was great. And my dad's like, he wanted to use this name, and I'm like, no, that's not catchy enough. I wanted something that I could wear on a t-shirt at and be like, that is cool. Okay, so once a month I have a class right here in the middle of the floor in this shop, and it's usually around 90 minutes. It really depends on um, how many people are here and how many questions are asked. Right. So anybody can ask anything they want regarding cat or tech or I'm sorry, cars. Um, and it, we first start with oil in vehicles, how to check the oil. I explain um, different things about technology in vehicles, how dipsticks are going away entirely in vehicles. Um, and then I also talk about antifreeze, power steering, transmission fluid. Then we show how a tire is properly changed in the equipment. Um, we run down air conditioning. We talk about fuses. We talk about all different types of things or what happens if you get a flat on the 90 or all different kinds of different scenarios. It's great for teen drivers because they can understand what their car is doing or what to do if this happens and to learn about your car, how to jump a car, exactly. how not to be scared of your car. It's good to be informed. Yes, exactly. I give packets out and everybody really loves it. I put some humor into it, <laughs> so <laughs> right. it's a fun class, yeah. So you've got some right here. Oh, yeah, this car what happened to a, these? <laughs> yeah, this was uh, in a wreck on the I-90 and Ooh. we're piecing it back together right now. So. Does that happen often? Or? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this was another front end wreck back here. It hit a pace bus and that was getting put back together. So this is just normal maintenance. So yeah, we're constantly putting together cars and that's how you learn cars. Take them apart, put them back right, together. Exactly. So. Steve Schertz, the automotive teacher here at South Elgin High School, shares his insight on women up and coming in the industry. It's, it's absolutely excellent and it's actually really needed. Uh, all technical industries, including automotive. Women, if you're going to do it, do it. Go to school. You got to get hands on training. That's so important. Um, so, you know, it's, it's definitely something that's reachable, and it doesn't matter what anybody says or thinks of you. If Jamie and Naomi's shop tells us anything, it's that no matter who you are, man or woman, it's never too early or late to fuel your desire to chase your dreams. We're coming up on the end of our show here, but before we go, we have to check in with our favorite duo. Without further ado, here's Dan and Dan's Restaurant Reviews. Feeling hungry? Looking for a new place to grab a bite? I'm Dan. And I'm Dan. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Dan, Dan and Dan, Dan Restaurant Dan Reviews. reviews.
Today we will be taking a look at a restaurant in Bartlett that will take you back to your childhood days. With lots of steam in the kitchen and delicious items on the menu, you'll never stop chew chew chewing your food. Mike Ventry and I'm the owner operator of Tutu's Train Whistle and Grow. Well the best parts of delivering the food on a train is to see the expression on uh, kids' faces when the train uh, shows up. Children still love uh, toy trains and to see their lunch or dinner show up on a train is, is uh, for them it's kind of magical. There is a lot of uh, many difficulties of uh, delivering food on the train. And the food, uh, train is so close to the tables and to the uh, counter that uh, a number of uh, our customers tend to either try and grab their baskets or touch the train as it goes by, and it's easily derailed. Uh, my most memorable experience. Um, it probably happens more than once, but it's the time uh, when a newcomer, a young child, comes in for the first time and, and sees a train bringing his food, and they start almost vibrating with excitement. And you see the happiness in their faces. The food's phenomenal. Uh, it takes us back to the time gone by. My favorite item is cheeseburger. Loved them all my life, and still do. The music is excellent, and Children love it. They have a wonderful time here and uh, enjoy themselves while they're here. So Dan, what was your impression of Tutu? Well, I had the chili dog and let me say, it was pretty good. How about you, Dan? I tried a veggie burger for the first time and I was not disappointed. Aside from the Barley location, Tutu also has restaurants in Glen Ellen and Naperville. Before I lose my train of thought, I want to tell y'all to chug along on over to Tutu Train Whistle Grill. I'm Dan. And I'm Dan. And, and this, this was, was your Dan and Dan, Dan restaurant, restaurant Review. review. On that note, that's a wrap for this month's edition of The Current. We'll see you at the end of October for a Halloween special. But until then, I'm Daryl Barnes. And I'm Tara Kodichny. Thank you for tuning in. And don't forget to have a great day.